Welcome Spartans to Halo TV Plus, part of Evolved, your home for Halo. I'm your host, Orn, and on Halo TV Plus, my guests and I recap Halo's original television show, Halo the Series, and we discuss its contents and unique canon within the Silver Timeline. Joining me again to discuss Episode 4 of Season 2, Reach, is David. Welcome back to the show, David. Thanks, Orn. I'm very excited once again to be speaking to you. Hello, everybody. Yes, uh, we have a lot to talk about. We we kind of restrained from saying some things in the commentary, so we can lay it all out here on the analysis. So we are going to dive right in uh, to kind of move along. So if uh, if you're a returning listener, you know this, but if you're just joining us, welcome to Halo TV+. Plus. We publish two episodes for every TV episode that gets released. This is the analysis episode where in a moment, David and I will highlight key scenes from Reach that we believe need further analysis. We'll also talk about characters, their motivations, choices that the showrunners and writers have made over the story, as well as any predictions we have for the next episode or episodes. Earlier this week, we released a commentary episode for Reach, where we discussed the whole episode while watching it. If you missed that one, we recommend you listen to that episode first before listening to this, because we, we kind of leave out some things to discuss because we've already discussed them on the commentary but there is a little bit of overlap so you definitely get a lot if you just listen to this one if you want halo tv plus is part of evolved and it hosts a variety of other halo podcasts like podcast evolved mission debrief hcs pro talk builds with blocks halo book club you can learn more about each of those halo shows on our website evolvedhalo.com Evolved also hosts another show called I Would Have Been Your Podcast, which is our Patreon-exclusive podcast for our subscribed patrons. If you're not a patron and you want to learn more, you can head over to patreon.com slash haloevolved. Patrons receive a variety of exclusive rewards, such as early episodes, access to our original 18-song soundtrack, unique swag, access to a private Discord channel, and more. Shout out to our current subscribers. We love you guys so, so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and that's it for that. All right. So we want to start this conversation, David, about the actual events. So like this episode reach, it showcases a pretty, like it it may be top five, top three important moments. I mean, I don't know if you want to call it historical moments, but just like plot details in the Halo extended lore i mean it's it and it is in one of the games not one of the mainline games but it is in halo reach so like the fall of reach is a very iconic event in halo core uh halo core canon obviously because the silver timeline is its own timeline they change some things and you know there's characters that aren't there new characters that are here and the way that it goes down is just overly different in a in a general sense you start from wherever point of view you want to but how do you like this interpretation or how you may not you may not like this interpretation of the fall of reach and the silver timeline compared to core canon and we'll just kind of take the conversation from there well i have to say it was a big swing by the um the showrunners leading off let's say a maybe a middling to negative season one reception realizing we got to go big to bring people back and what do you do in halo to do that you do the fall of reach because it, it probably is, like, even thinking about, like, all the games and also, like, it, for whatever reason, it is the largest and probably other than the core story and the biggest, one of the biggest events and kind of shapes everything else. I mean, we go back to it and we, we love it. Do you know what I mean? It's Bungie's last game that was very significant that they went back and did the Fall of Reach. Or like, whatever you say about the mismatch of canon that happened from that. But you know what I mean? The discrepancies. Yeah. It was such a huge event. We all love it. Um, This big sci-fi military planet that's like a significant presence for the human what kind of war effort you know and then having it fall the belief that like the because the war up till then was outer colonies not the inner colonies we're safe the war doesn't exist here right and right. then all of a sudden you have holy shit the aliens have found us um so it's it's a huge significant event and obviously we'll it's where the war let's say ramps up on a scale we haven't seen since so they introduce kind of plans being glassed in season one and stuff like that. And you see kind of like what's how like the humans take that. And then you're like, then the fear of it 
becoming reach when they realized you see Perez in this episode like she understands that like if Covenant are here this planet's gone there's, there, there's nothing left you can't fight there isn't a fight there is we're screwed especially because you know Fleet can't pull out and you have that whole dynamic and that's saying like how it's portrayed in this show but I actually really really like it I think because it's different, but it's like it's got the it's got the same vibe, and I think the show did a has done a fantastic job. I think to win people back, do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. Everybody, as far as I can see, they're they're very positive on this show, um, at the moment, which is great. It's what you want, do you know what I mean? I, I'm mm-hmm. very happy that that the season is is kicked off the way it has, and then them like taking, okay, kind of setting up the doubts in John, like to seeing Oni go against John Ackerson. He's such a wonderful character. I love how they brought him in, how they tied in his motivations to kind of being against the Spartan twos and Halsey because of his sister who was like a failed Spartan. I love that. That's awesome. And then you see his, his reaction with his father, like how he is cutting ties with reach realizing because of the analysis Cortana has done, um, that the planet, there's nothing to be done. The planet will fall. So he's like, okay, we have to cut our losses. He grabs you. Imagine the like the the smaller artifact. Don't know why he leaves Cortana behind. That feels kind of a, a swing. A, yeah, a miss. that's you know, that's, that's something quite strange. Yeah, that is very strange to me. And I, I don't know if Ackerson is maybe dismissing Cortana. I think p- perhaps yeah. Of like like core assets are taken off. Like the Spartan armor is taken, but he leaves Cortana. I mean that's that's a it, it was obviously a deliberate choice. Maybe it is he he doesn't see her usefulness. Uh, as anything great or maybe he don't he doesn't think the covenant will invade fleetcom as opposed to just glass the planet and not give a shit yeah it's um, it's it's hard to it's hard to say because it could be a lot of a lot of those theories right you, you just named a few like yeah. he could have dismissed cortana's true capabilities and just think that she's just maybe maybe he thinks she's a dumb ai as opposed to a smart ai if there is that kind of distinction in, in the silver timeline uh he he may have cloned cortana and and took like the main part of Cortana and whereas what the Covenant took is maybe a clone or like a, a subsystem of Cortana just to do like basic things for Fleetcom. Or yeah, may, maybe he just thought it was all gonna be destroyed and he wanted Cortana to kind of die with the Spartan twos and everything else that was left on yeah, Reach to kind of then mm. to then start and rebuild his own, you know, new world order, so to speak, of the UNSC and and uh and Fleetcom, so it's 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 in, it'll be interesting to see if that ever gets addressed, because what I what I hope is not the case is they just lazily left her there just so McKee can take her and then do something mm. else with. Like I feel like there needs to be a a conscious decision or acknowledgement of why Cortana was left to then, because like if they were just if they don't really mention it again, then it's just like. Okay, then yeah, she literally was just left because they needed McKee to take her to then wherever we go on with the story of what maybe McKee and them try to do with Cortana. Then, I don't know. I, I, I see it could be like a plot hole if it's not addressed the right way. So that's, mm. that's definitely left me with, I think, the most questions after this episode is like, what are they doing there? Because like, they, yeah, does, and, does, does the Covenant in this timeline have a very anti-AI uh, perspective do they even know what it is how does yeah. McKee even know what it is because she didn't know anything about Cortana in season one well so. I think oh no I think she know, knew a little bit because like there were some scenes where when she was with Master Chief like he was like talking to himself and but yeah and well, so, well, let's like, say... so she may have some sort of general idea of what Cortana is but yeah the Sanghealy and, and as far as the Covenant's aware like I'm pretty sure they're like anti uh, AI like in a in a right like in core canon like they don't in like core, using in core canon they are yeah for sure um, it's not until like much later that they like embrace that i think yeah if at all and that was the and that was one of the big kind of let's say offensive capabilities that humanity had over the covenant was their ai yeah and their ability obviously their katana to just breeze through the covenant systems so i'm, I'm curious as to what mckee thinks Cortana can do for her and I don't know I'm intrigued to see what what happens here what her purpose is she seems Cortana almost to be she's not the same she was obviously disconnected from the grid the the way Ackerson had her so I I don't know if she her personality seems different it's not just her appearance and 
I don't know. Yeah, seems... I'm, I'm I'm waiting for a McKee explanation because I yeah. I would love like even if it was a little bit of a flashback to kind of help fill in some of the gaps of like how she survived. What you know did did she, did she lose? I don't know some sort of capability. Like does she maybe interact with the artifacts differently? Like maybe she still is a blessed one, but maybe that she, she's like a different type think, or something. I think she is the same. Based on the fact, well, she still has clearly power and pull within the covenant, so she's dictating to. And she is. She is. Loc- she elites. did locate where the large artifact was because it was yes. in sword base, and so she, yeah, so she, she still has some sort of connection with Forerunner tech. So yeah, it's. It, I'm. I'm very intrigued to learn what that's all about because what, what's going on because it. Right now, it just kind of feels like she just pops up at the most convenient time and yeah. does her little thing and then leaves. And like it's it's a little too like plotted out. I think it it doesn't seem as natural. And I think that's just because I don't have the explanation. But if they if they give it to us by saying, "Oh, we found a luminary and it is able to do X, Y, and Z," and it's like, "Okay, all right, that makes sense," and I'm like. Now I'm now I understand. But if it's just, oh, McKee's also here. Oh, McKee knows exactly where Cortana is, and she, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, it, mm. it's almost like Quan when we get to her eventually. Of like, what happened to her during the six months? Like, how is she an assassin now? Like, did she meet the <laughs> Monitor? Does she know her purpose? Like, like I'm I'm waiting for these answers that just make sense because right now it's just frustrating whenever she's doing something or saying something because it's all cryptic to keep us on the edge of our seats. But like. We need something to like allow us to understand as the viewer like what is going on from these characters' points of views. If we're supposed to sympathize and empathize with them, like we we need to have a little. I think we need to have a little bit more. But I feel like I feel like McKee though is a little bit more deliberately like closer to the chest. Like I kind of understand why we don't know more about that. But I feel like Quan is long overdue. Like we already had poor reception from season one. We we need we need something from her to just care about her because right now it, I we I think that's going to be don't. the next episode. <clears throat> I think it's going to be a Quan heavy episode. I think I could see that. I could yeah. see that. Um, but before, before we get to the next episode, though, um, yeah, to kind of bounce back, that was kind of our Cortana McKee discussion. But um, but yeah, to to go back to the the actual depiction of the fall of Reach, like I I agree with what you're saying that like they they did it very well within the realm of the movie or the TV show. Like, and I, and I think at this point, halfway through a second season of this show, that's not Canon. Like if you have not embraced the fact that it's its own thing at this point, then I, I feel like you're as a viewer, you just may not ever get there. It may not be the show for you sort of a thing, because like, yes, what they did in this show is different from what they did in core Canon. And it's not like, they're magically going like when they fi- eventually find the halo, like it's not going to be just CE filmed like it, it, it. That's just not what this show has been. And it's not going to be what the show will be. They're well, it can't now because they goddamn kill off keys. So well, you're not yeah. getting, you know, you're, you, yeah, yeah. we're getting significant change, which is the, the probably the exciting part of it. So, so it's just to see what they're going to do next, how, how these changes impact the canon of this universe. Yeah. Which main events get touched upon? What the difference is now, and how and how they weave the different you know things that they can pull. Like, like one thing that I've I've seen online is like, oh well, noble team come in and do X, Y, and Z, and they'll have like a team up or something. But it's like, well, silver team I think is just it just is noble team or just is red team or blue team. They just they're the team that we follow. We got a little bit of cobalt, but then they were expendable because they're not. You know, our team, they, they, they're they red shirts, if you will, from Star Trek lingo. Like, they... Well, we have, I know we had that board full of Spartan teams and Spartan names. So we know that they're out there in universe. I, I think, I think Silver Team are probably going to be the Reach Spartans. I, I don't think we're going to get too many other Spartans, I think, on Reach. I, the yeah, fall. I agree. I think everyone else is, is off planet. Hmm. I mean, I'd, I'd have to look at the board or whatever, but it, I, I would, makes sense. it would make sense to me. Otherwise, you'd have some other Spartan running around. Hey, where's my armor? My armor's yeah, not here either. But no, well, especially because when you think from the perspective of Atkinson knew about it weeks 
in advance. I mean, how long was it since Visegrad went dark? Do you know what I mean? He knew about yeah. it. So I'm imagining he's deploying the key resources. As we see, he robbing the armor. He, they're all gone. He only left behind what he didn't care about. Do you yeah. know? Or, so I, I imagine the Spartans are a resource, as much as he probably doesn't like them, um, they are definitely a resource that he, he respects. So I say right, he's but, not going to waste maybe, it. But maybe you have like Gamma Team or Omega Team or those other teams in there, Gold Team, like maybe those Spartans are a little bit more susceptible to his master plan, whereas Silver Team being like of the, of the you know, like they, they are, they might be The pellets harder. matter. Yeah, I mean, that's you know, it's Actually, Silver yeah, Team that's, took that's the exactly. pellets, so yeah. we don't know the status of the other teams. Even just look at how he manipulated Kai with her pellet out. Like he was so good at that and at winning Kai to his side um, because of how he manipulated John and the story there. Uh, which is part of what I really liked. I like that they brought in the aspects from Halo 4 of like the military trying to tear down John because he was too big of an icon for them and therefore, you know, out of their control. So they're okay, they're bringing the aspects of in them going against John and say, okay, we need other Spartans. We need our own. And I know we're, you're, we've, t- we've talked, touched upon that a few times and, and what Ackerson is up to. But um, yeah, how they've, how they've done the fall and even like showing... The explosions that we talked about, like they're on ground, it's not glassing, it's a ground war. Like, that's the exciting part of seeing, like, how that happened because this show is not showing space battles, like, at all. So, we've not even seen, like, ship captain kind of characters. You know, we had Keys, he was an admiral, he wasn't on the bridge of a ship. We never really, except briefly in this episode, and then he left it. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was on a ship. So, for like, five yeah, seconds. We, we're not getting, like, space combat, so. We're, we're very much on the I mean, ground it's, for it, each. Uh, it's teased later on, yeah. so we'll we'll see what that entails. But that might, might be more of a episode seven or eight type of. A but detail. aren't that the the answer to the question? I'm really liking how they're depicting the fall of reach in, in this show. Yeah, uh, are you the same? Yeah, in a general sense, yes. I yeah. you know I I think we talked about this on the commentary. Like I like the choice of stealing the armor, and they have to fight for it, and. Now they don't have it with an asterisk next to it. Like, well, I don't want that to be the rest of the show. Like, I think that's Same. a great, like, one, one and a half episode obstacle and conflict that our Spartans need to then overcome so then they can now get back in a suit. And, you know, you have all these little hurdles that they have to get over and, and we keep rooting for them at every step along the way. But, you know, Halo is a guy in a suit. So, like, we need to... And with Cortana, like we we also need <laughs> Cortana to pair up with Chief again because that was taken away from us at the beginning of the season. So we we need to get back to that point where it's Chief with Cortana in the in the suit, saving the day um, by the end of it all. So uh, I like like you said as well, Perez being there with Chief to kind of give that civilian. I mean, she is you know in the in the UNSC, but like basically a non-Spartan's perspective of, of the atrocity that's going on and to kind of help give some more of that perspective. We saw the mall life kind of just, you know, run away and, and get terrorized. We saw the, the shop owner with the antiquities and got a little bit of insight into what's going on there. And then on top of all that, we got, of course, the, the military side and the response and key speech and all that. And I think the way it's all being laid out, it, it didn't feel rushed and it, and it unfolded, I think, fairly naturally with what went on. If I were to compare it to season one, we had that episode Reckoning, um, which I think might be a better action sequence than the, in, in, in the, finale, than the finale of season one. But my issue with Reckoning, though, is that like it it kind of just happens super quick and then... Like there's a little bit of a buildup and then it happens and then it's just like over. Whereas like in this episode, like the threat is always behind you. And these characters like Halsey and Soren, they're just trying to leave Fleetcom or leave the area and like elites are there and the building's exploding. And, and so there's, there's this constant tension that's getting just pulled at this nice slow pace that I think is what kind of gives this fall of reach a little bit of a, more impactful sequence that I hope they just kind of continue into later episodes as opposed to just being one giant event 
it happens and then it's over kind of like kind of like sanctuary but like sanctuary is not that good of an example because it kind of did its purpose to where it's like the inciting incident of the new season they get in there stuff hits the fan shit hits the fan and it gets glass and they have to leave but like if that was reach that would have been bad you know what i mean yeah yeah for sure so uh so yeah all all around i'm I, like i'm excited i think it they did they did a good job and i just want them to continue what's going what's going on with it i i, I want to see a little bit more like uh spartan action you know with the suits and stuff but i'm okay that we didn't get it in this episode like i've already said but that's that's kind of really the only thing i would say that was quote unquote missing from this episode was was armor action is what i'll call it hashtag yeah i think they're teasing us yeah we have to see them without it before we get it with with them with it yeah and i have, I have an idea about how they do that we'll talk a little bit <laughs> we'll talk a little bit okay well we uh we had two major deaths this episode um one was definitely shocking another one i think was I saw a little coming, you know, a few moments before it, but it was still a little... I wasn't expecting it. Well, in the previous analysis, you guys called the death of Keys. You you even said he's well, the most likely character to die. Yes, <laughs> I did say that. I, th- I thought yeah. that he would be the most likely to die. Um, I think we also mentioned that um, Lewis would die as well between Steve and yeah, I. Yeah, you did, you um, called out. But, the, but my point Lewis... is, is that when there's that line, I mentioned this on the, the commentary episode, like... I was like, oh, Chi, uh, Keys is going to be on the front lines with everybody. And I was like, okay, yeah, he might die. And then Chief goes, no, sir, you can't go to the front lines. We need you. We need you to have more speeches like that. And you need to lead us. And I was like, oh, okay, well, they're going to just save him and they'll kill him off later. And so that misdirection, I guess, worked on me to then when he did die, it was still a surprise to me. Um, but yeah. But in any event, to talk specifically about Keyes' death scene, I mentioned this on the commentary as well, I think the overall scene was very well done. Like, just as an emotional beat in TV, like, you have, you have your character go out there to do the one last thing, it, he gets in a pinch, and, you know, he, he gets blown up, and it's very heartbreaking and all that. I'm just disappointed that, like, that, that it was Keyes that that happened to, just for the fact that, like, now he's gone. Like... Now I don't think not, yeah. I don't think Keys needed like a bigger way out or like a a um like a more heroic death. Like I don't think he necessarily needed that. I'm just sad that well now I don't get any more keys cuz also like you said like we haven't really gotten the true keys from the game until our keys, this episode. You know I mean? Yeah, I I'm not a, a huge fan of the keys in this canon in this timeline because uh, okay, they, they they kind of set him up right. You know, he was involved in the Spartan program early on. That's kind of hidden. He kind of seems to be very involved with John and Spartans as adults. And they obviously, like, really, he's very much a father figure. Then there's, like, the betrayal of, like, the realization that he was involved. That was kind of interesting. But at the same time, he was always on the ground, the foot soldier. I wanted to see Keys as a captain. I wanted to see him in a ship. I wanted to see spaceship combat. They're just season this show was clearly not doing that so this is a case he kind of felt a little bit redundant and there's also the questions of like who's in charge of of like the military like at any given moment it just seems to be very kind of like Parangoski's doing a bit of something over here okay now she's not now she's in hiding wait no she's still a part of Oni they have Ackerson who is quote-unquote the boss why is he the boss? How is he above keys if he's just a replacement for Halsey Halsey wasn't above keys yeah um all this kind of stuff of okay i have no idea what's really going on so like in, in the background and obviously we had like the board that were in season one they're not in this season of like they're the people you're uh you know they're they're above you do you know what i mean that you're reporting to these people this, this committee but with, with hood being like one of the main members of and it's just a case of okay, he, he even I think isn't he like promoted in this season? Well, he wasn't an admiral in last season. Yeah, he so. was promoted between the seasons, which yeah, and and I agree the the overall hierarchy is is unclear because uh, mm. what what I'm just kind of like piecing together in my head that makes sense is that whatever board that we had in season one still ex- exist with some restructuring now that keys is an admiral 
now that Ackerson has come up from wherever he came from, Hall, uh, uh, Parangoski kind of going undercover. So like there's been some sort of restructuring to some degree to give different shifts in power. And then a lot of those board people have left Reach because it's going to get glassed. And so now they're all somewhere else, kind of like what happened in the Guardian event where uh, Lord Hood and... Um, not Parangoski, but who who replaces Parangoski? What's her name? Oh, Osman. Osman, uh, and you know they run away and they go to Rossback's world when the Guardian event happens at Earth. So like, I feel like a similar sort of thing has had to happen. And there's some, I don't know that 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 to me makes sense. But again, none of that's ever explained. So that's me just kind of inferring what would likely be the case. Yeah. So. so- I mean, his death, the scene was good. It was well done. He had a great speech. So, you know, this was his best episode. So I was finding, like, excellent. We're getting a keys who takes charge. He's doing cool shit. Then they kill him. I'm like, oh, God damn it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, and, and there's a case of, okay, now it's kind of interesting for, like, what his death does. And one of the things I said in the uh, commentary is that I love that it, how, it, how severely it, it, it affected Halsey. Yeah. See her kind of armor break. Because there was a bit of a panic in season one when Miranda was in danger. And then that kind of quickly wrapped itself up. And I was like, okay, that was interesting. So she does care about her daughter. Because then later on in the season, she's manipulating her daughter. Um, yep. and Which was also a great scene. But then it's a case of, okay, how much does she give a shit now? Um, She's clearly been in prison for a period of time. And you get that great scene where he meet Keys and Halsey meet. And he's clearly like... He didn't know she was on reach and that clearly she was in prison and Ackerson had her, um, which I don't think we'll ever touch on what happened there or how, how that goes down, how, how, he, how he gets her. But the fact that she was like absolutely devastated with the death of, of Keys and I'm like, excellent, because what I really want to see is Halsey now becoming more like the Halsey we know of actually caring about the Spartans, really actually caring about what what's going on and not just being this really cold and manipulative um person um but she's like natasha mcclone like how she's portrayed in this show is amazing i really really love her but i I want to see halsey being on their side as opposed to being on her own side so um i I hope to see some kind of change come come for her from from this show or from that event essentially yeah no i i i agree i think it'd be great to get i i I love character changes and all that kind of stuff so like i i can see her doing that and it would be great to have someone else you know batting for the home team so to speak like Mm. she very much was in her on her own team in season one and here in season two we we kind of have chief versus ackerson and to varying levels of degree these other characters on either side and so to have halsey be on Chief's side or or, you know, I assume it'd be on his side as opposed to Ackerson. Like it, it that would be a good asset for them to then play with things and have her do what Halsey does, as opposed to her trying to be very self fulfilling and on her own agenda. And so it, it would just change things up a little bit, which I think would be an interesting twist in the current you know, rela- relationship dynamic. Yeah, and then. The replacement of keys for canon. Okay, what's the impact there? Either, is there a parallel of autumn? Maybe there isn't in this show. I mean, I'm, I'm now thinking: Does is the end of this season really with Chief getting Cortana and getting to the Halo? I'm not sure, um, because we don't have the character or like the the, the mission doesn't exist in this canon that was in the previous, which was Operation Red Flag, which is. Cortana and Chief and Spartan team with Pillar of Autumn going behind the enemy lines to kidnap a prophet. That's not happening here. That's not that was ongoing at the same time as Reach when that was falling and that they were trying to scramble to get there. So with none of that, it's kinda of like, okay, what's where where are we gonna end up? I mean I mean unless they tweak it in Operation Red Flag is now to kidnap McKee for whatever reason. Ooh I like this. <laughs> I like this. This is good. Yes. Okay. And, I'm and on just board. just for the note of Halo, like I feel like the episode, the last episode's titled Halo, and I feel like it's gonna have True. the very very similar relevance as the episode Sword, where the last 
three minutes of the sword episode was the the elite and McKee infiltrating sword base to get the keystone. And it's like so I feel like that's, I wonder I feel like that's what's gonna happen with with Halo. I, like we're gonna be yeah. on the Pillar of Onum. It's gonna basically be the opening cinematic of C E and then it's gonna cut. Or I guess the last do we ever see the Halo at the end of Halo Reach? I don't think at so. The end, yeah you do. The yeah. end of Halo Reach. The the end sequence of Halo Reach is the the introduction is the first sequence of Halo C E. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I, I feel like I feel like that is where you would end it. So then when you when you start season three, it's like, okay, we're on the ring, and then they do whatever they do. Now we're doing C E events that aren't quite like C E events. They well, yeah, that so has silver very, silver so timeline C E events. Silver timeline <laughs> C E. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But then I hope to because we're okay kind of moving us along maybe to say into the next major death of the show with the death of Vanek, um which was a great scene i loved how he died of like i think in season one he said like about the needler being his favorite weapon his favorite kind of covenant weapon and like having him pick that up shoot at the non-arbiter uh because we don't have his name i off the, off the top is that i think or you uh, we probably find out this elite's name but the lead elite that's with mckee getting shot and pulling out his own needle from his chest and sticking into Vanek. Like that was such a great moment, man. It was so cool. Yeah, it w- I'm I'm part of me wishes that more than one needle was on in his chest to super combined. To do but it, yeah. Aside from that though, I I agree one hundred percent. Like it it was unexpected for me. It uh it it I felt it, it hit hard. It was just a great sequence when you had uh John Soren, Riz, and Vanek all fighting. Halsey's hiding because she, you know, is not a fighter. You have the Marines, you have the Jackals and the Elites. Like it's, it was, it was the, a great sort of like climactic ending. And then of course you ha- you have McKee show up in there, and that kind of had some drama as well. So yeah, his his death, and then the episode the episode ends a lot. Like watching it again, it ends super quickly right after his death. Like it really yeah, holds it on it, and then it leaves you with it. It's like, yep, that's. That's what we're doing. And, like, I felt like they did a great job. Like, Vanek being, like, the com- the com- comedy relief in episode one and stuff like that. Like, how they opened up his character, I really, really liked. So, like, it makes it feel even more devastating that he's gone just like that. I mean, yeah. I, I like, you know, I, I thought he they did a fantastic job. And then I think his impact of his death will obviously be Silver Team uh, of, of how they're going to react to this. And then... I mean, this... The- this potentially, this episode really is kind of the beginning of the fracturing of Silver Team, because we we didn't have Kai, we, and now we lost Vanek. Who knows what's going to go on with Riz, and we don't know what Soren, yeah. you know, whether he suits up and he fights for Silver Team or not or whatever. Like, but this is this is the beginning of their crumble. Yeah, I think we lose Riz in the and in, in this season. That's that's the way I'm kind of feeling it, because especially because they had her set up as like, what is she going to do outside of? Which I, I loved her character development too, and they gave her two new friends who were going to help her out. They take them away very quickly. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's kind of like she's been absolutely rocked. I well, think from her from her new her new character, you know. And and we get that scene in Visigrad where she goes to Lewis's house. And she, and he's like, "What are you doing here?" And he's like, "Well, remember the other day you mentioned like what life would be not like being a Spartan, not being yeah. a Spartan." And they kind of like smile at each other, and then it cuts, and like we don't know what the conversation was, but like we do cut at the very very end of the episode. They're just watching like TV on the couch, but like you definitely get a sense that like she's thinking about like what what is a Spartan retirement or so, or what is another life, and there is some level of hope there, I guess. And that was then just completely ripped from her after she saw the boyfriend die and then witnessing Lewis sacrifice himself to take out that wraith. And yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see how she emotionally takes it and grows from it or deals with it or whatever. Because yeah, that, that, was, that was a thread that was developing that has now been kind of shattered to a degree. Or maybe not. Maybe this is the push to to then stop but i don't you could take it either way because this could be more of a reason why we need spartans to prevent things like this so it, it's there's a lot of a lot of ways we can interpret that so i think there's definitely a lot of character choices that riz can take 
over the next few episodes. So I'm yeah, I'm I'm really excited for her. I think we're going to see her break down. Plus, I think it's going to be super sad, super emotional. But I think, oh yeah, yeah, I think we'll see her kind of break. And that's my worry is that we'll see her break, and then she'll there'll be a, an epic sacrifice moment. I mean, for her, and it's kind of sad because I want to, I don't, want, but I guess we have to see the Spartans fall. You know, in, in this fight, this is where you would do it. Is in a, is in the reach, the fall of reach. You know. Yeah. No. This is like I said. This is if if we're gonna insert noble team. Or, you know, or take Noble Teen's place. You know what what happens to everybody? I mean, everyone dies except June. So, yeah, sneaky June just, runs away. We're sneaky them. June with Halsey, or maybe is Riz with Halsey? Soren Halsey? Who some of these people getting? Out? That's oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. There we go. Maybe, 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 maybe we touched. Yeah, like, so. like you said, like you said in the commentary, all because Chiefs alone on the on the ring doesn't mean everybody just has to die. You know. Yeah. But it's but it's. It's great to be in this position, though, to where it it can go in any way. Like because it's its own canon, the like the writers and Kiki and everybody, they can choose how to take it, and hopefully we just want it to be an emotional, impactful way of storytelling. But like you know, we can see they they get to choose who lives and who dies, who lives on and does something else, or who is then remembered for what they did. So mm. yeah exciting stuff oh yeah um the last thing for keys going back to keys did that when when he said he needed a light do we think that was a a johnson reference at the end of ce where he lights the cigar kind of kind of get, yeah did you yeah get any of that and then when you fool's got a light or I, yeah i feel yeah. like i didn't some, think about something the else that oh you know what no what's no, I think it's a different homage. What's his name dies in The Departed that way. It's all coming to me now. Did, did you see The Departed? With um, I did, yeah, many years ago. But yeah, I've seen him. Matt Damon and what's his name? Leo. Leonardo DiCaprio. Leo. Yes, yes. Uh, Martin Sheen, right before he dies, he says, anyone got a light? And then he gets thrown out of a window. But I feel like even that was an homage <laughs> to something. So I feel like that, I have to look this up. I think I think it's more of those one of those. There's probably a movie moment like this where a character gets blown up with fire and he takes out a cigarette or something and asks, he's taking order of people at the same time. That too, yeah. He's That's yeah, he yeah. is like there is that kind of dichotomy as well. You're yeah. right. Um, it's a it's a tropey scene, but it's it's good. It's a way to go. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it was well done. It was. Mm. I'm like I said. I'm sad that he's gone, but like I didn't I didn't think they did it in poor taste. So it just it is what it is. Yeah. Um All right, did we already touch on what's next for Silver Team? Uh not really but kind of. Uh do you what wanna, I want I guess, to say, I guess what yeah. else do you want to touch on for that before we move on? What I want to what's next? So who is Silver Team? What we have left is John and Riz. We have Soren, our new buddy. Um but I know from you were touched upon the Halo Declassified that Soren probably isn't sticking yes. around very long. So, okay. So, what I'm kind of thinking of is we have Halsey, we have Silver Team, we have John who is hurt, we have Riz who is also hurt, um, still kind of recovering. They're in a very desperate situation, and we have Spartans with no armor. And as far as we know, the armor has been taken away off planet. I think Halsey is here now to provide us with armor. I think she has, if you remember her Ooh. lab has yeah. armor in it and it's of an older style so okay. i wonder oh, are yeah, we yeah, getting yeah. an are we getting an armor up moment with a substandard spartan armor that they need to give either to keep john alive or to help him kind of keep him in the fight so i think we are getting spartan armor we are getting a gear up moment because we have to i cannot they cannot have the fall of reach with spartans with no armor uh i know that and maybe that answers i mean it makes sense at the beginning but we have to see these. We have to see the Spartans gear up. So, like, I'm I'm thinking Halsey will facilitate that. That having her there, what what can she offer now with the fall of Reach? The last shuttle is gone. That we think. So, like, I don't know if Halsey gets off planet. I wonder is she here and that does does she help? Um. So th- that's kind of really what I'm thinking. That's what I'm. Uh, what's what I want to like see that. happen next? Yeah, I can see that for sure. The only thing that's true that I thought Soren would stay with them. You know. For the name, but he fit right into the team. He looked really nice. I like yeah. the idea of him him stepping up again. 
um, to be a Spartan. The fact that one he was the one, like you said, the one Spartan who wanted to be it, uh, who understood what what he was getting himself into. So I love the idea of seeing but, him step yeah, up. Yeah, but I do think to, st- to I think his character though, and this kind of makes sense for what the very brief sneak peek we saw for the next episode. I, I it makes sense to me that he would not stick around, and he wants to go and look for his family, make sure his family's safe, and then if he presumably he links up with his wife and she will tell him that oh Kessler's gone and is somewhere like to me that makes sense that th- that he would go that route now what i wouldn't mind getting is if we get a little bit of closure there to where he knows his family is safe but and then he then has a call to action moment and then kind of joins silver team in a sense comes to, back yeah kind of comes back and does whatever final stand or or whatever and and maybe he sacrifices himself maybe he doesn't but like i can see that being more likely than him just oh hey we just fought like we used to kind yeah. of like let me stick around because i think his priorities are still with his family yeah i think that makes sense and i would have thought he would have been here but the fact that we have okay the sneak peek has shown us that he's off planet so therefore there must be a way to get him off planet yeah, uh, he's his focus is obviously going to be on getting his family. I know you and Steve talked about Kessler being sent to Reach, and that's what brings Quan back into the storyline, makes yeah. her relevant that she comes to Reach. But I think Kessler's actually been sent to Alaria, to Alaria, who we know is the name of the next episode. So we do that. That triggered my brain of I know where that is, and that's the planet from that's referenced mostly in in Halo Canon. It came from the Halo Nightfall. It's a planet that kind of fell asunder under, it had like a drought that you, uh, you you see kind of pulled away. It turned into kind of like a criminal, kind of like an underworld kind of planet, which gives me the rubble vibes. So I think it kind of makes sense that like people who are trying to get out of the rubble or can't stay there probably head to Alera and look for like work in the same kind of situation. So I wonder, does Kessler end up there? That would bring... Soren there with Quan and obviously Alera trying to, and I'm not sure let's say how they make up and get themselves, but it makes sense that maybe Soren brings in Quan, the awareness of what's happening on Reach. I don't know. I don't know if their storyline intersects though. I think that might be it. So I'd be very surprised of Soren getting to his family and then getting back to Reach. I think the timelines I mean, kind of kind of mix up. Like how long yeah. is Reach going to hold out before it falls? Like how much time does do we does he have? to yeah. get out do his business and it's come back it's hard to say yeah yeah so. un- unless unless he kind of has to fight with the unsc in order to then get off planet for sure um, yeah or cause... maybe maybe kwan and uh liera they they go to reach themselves and they they just they go there and they realize that oh shit this is what's going down and then now they're trapped there so now they're everyone's trying to leave reach it's uh yeah i don't know it, it will we yeah, have plenty plenty of questions but we should be getting you know those answers in the next episode so hmm. we'll kind of see what what happens but i i did like seeing soren like because i i wanted him to do some level of like spartan fighting and i i feel like i got just the taste and i and i feel like i would be happy if we didn't get more of that than what we got in this episode but it would be nice to get a little bit more, I think, because it was it was pretty cool to see him with, you know, his old friends, basically. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Is that it on your... Uh, Alera, Alera, yeah, Alaria I mean, theory? my worry is we're cutting from a very crazy, heavy action episode. I know TV shows like to do this, of cutting you between action and then breaking you up. And then now you're going to go to have a completely different type of episode. Right. So I, my worry would be, okay, I hope it's not a Quan episode. I was just, it's on a layer. It's a completely different planet. It's not anywhere near Reach or have, as far as we know, anything to do with the storyline of Fall of Reach. Yeah. Therefore, it's got to be the B plot of Quan's storyline with Kessler, with Liara, with maybe I, I Sora mean, yeah, now like if we, he gets off. So We didn't get any of them in this last episode, so it, it, it's I'm, very I, likely I have, that yeah. we get them. And if you look at season one, we had Reckoning, which was the big fight scene. We actually did get some Quan and Soren stuff on Magical just very briefly. But yeah. then the next episode, Solace, that was 100%, or I guess 0% Quan. And then the next episode after that was Inheritance, and that was 100% Quan. 
Quan and Soren. So much much to what your point is that it's we're probably going to be getting more of Quan seeing what's going on with her and and Liera while we kind of just get a little bit of the response to the fall of reach. I feel like we're not going to really get it's definitely not the level of fighting and action that we got on this episode, but it's, I think it's going to be like, kind of like in a, like the brief moment in like Lord of the Rings at Helm's Deep where like after they retreat that's ex- to the keep. That's exactly what know, I was thinking of, of like you know, cutting like, to Frodo and Sam in the middle of Helm's Deep big fight and then cutting to other people, right? you know, that's what I, yeah. next episode might be like that where we're getting maybe the lull of the fighting on Reach. We're getting like maybe John getting like medical treatment. We're getting kind of the ramifications of the deaths. And then maybe we have a very Quan heavy episode. Soren legging it away. He must get off planet somehow. Um, so it's kind of intriguing to see. Maybe, maybe they bring in the Saber program. Maybe Halsey has like, oh, we have a secret bunch of ships over here. <laughs> and then Soren's like, excellent, goodbye. And he just legs it. Yeah. Yeah, they could. Yeah, that would work. Intriguing. Intriguing stuff. Um, so you have something else you want to touch on. Yeah, so the last thing I want to touch on is Onyx, which is the title of two episodes from now. Because this episode, we did not get any Kai. We saw Ackerson and Visegrad getting on the ship and leaving. And so, like Steve uh, predicted, that we still don't know, but it's it's leaning more like that, that Kai went with him to train the Spartan Threes or or rally them up and have some sort of leader uh, at Onyx, which is what happened in Core Cannon. Mm. And so I feel like that is where that th- storyline is going. And I have a feeling we won't get Kai and Ackerson in the next episode. So then they can continue to build that up into the Onyx. So we, we still stay with, I guess, our A plot on Reach and then our B plot with Quan and, and Kessler and all that. Uh, is Onyx the also... episode directly after Lara? Yes. Okay. That's if I remember correctly, because yeah, I think okay. it goes, I think it goes Onyx, Thermopylae, Halo. Damn. Okay. So then, so... do you think we have two episodes not on Reach now, and then we come back to the fall, fall of Reach being Thermopylae, and then? Well, I feel like I feel like we're we're gonna have Reach episode or Reach scenes. Yeah. Okay. In every episode going forward. I hope so. It's just, I think it's just going to be a little bit in the next two, and then Thermopylae is going to be the big stand at Reach, and yeah. I feel like that's when the glassing beams are going to. I mean, down. I'm still, I'm still in shock that there's an episode called Onyx, because that could only be the one thing. So I'm like, yeah, no, exactly, yeah. So, and and I honest, and I could see that being a little bit of a flashback as well. Like you can, yeah, it. We'll, we'll just kind of see. But the the main point that I wanted to say. Uh, before we wrap up here and the whole reason of bringing onyx up is because for the first time in season two there is a mention of miranda keys who i who i keep saying has been noticeably the se- absent the secret character uh, of the halo secret season character. two yeah uh i i i miss her i want to know what's going on with her and it's especially important now that jacob keys has been killed um uh, halsey asks keys in the elevator where is miranda and he says she's safe but i can't tell you where she is i think she's at onyx and she is she's been working on the spartan 3 program and she's basically the halsey of the spartan 3s and ackerson is the parangoski of the spartan 3s and then kai kind of will come in to be the kurt of the spartan 3 i like that i I like that idea I think she's definitely, well, obviously from, I love the Kai manipulation back. And so I think he's definitely taken her off world. I believe she probably doesn't know that Reach has been fallen. I believe he doesn't tell her anything. He's just told her, okay, I have him. She came to him going like, put me back in the fight. And he's like, I have a job for you. She probably yeah. doesn't realize what it is until she gets there. And then he's like, this is now your job. And then yep. she has a relationship with Miranda already, which I really like. And it, the two of them make perfect sense. For what for like making the next wave, um, I I like that idea and then being manipulated by Ackerson into like creating the next wave and it being under his control and stuff like that. I love that idea. I uh, I have a quite one last question for you. Do you think that they know what Onyx is yet, or do you think that that gets discovered later? 
do you think Onyx is just a planet that they don't actually realize it's a shield world? Oh, man, I don't know. That's because they could take it. In, I, I hope they keep the core canon of it all that it, that it is a dice sphere and all that. And they I don't feel know. like it would be yeah. better if they are just now discovering it. Yeah. Like I feel like they've maybe they've already have Forerunner artifacts and maybe that maybe that's what Miranda's doing. Maybe she has nothing to do with the Spark yeah, program. But she's over but instead, there. Instead, on... she's looking at the shield other world. artifacts and she's trying to look at those artifacts that they found. And so they may not know what it is when we, the viewer, enters the story. But they, I mean, they've been there at most six. Well, I guess actually they could be there longer than six months. So I guess that's a mute point. But I, I think what I would, how I would write it is when we the viewer get introduced to onyx there's a military presence we have all the spartan threes being trained and all that kind of stuff we have miranda and her division of scientists investigating what they don't know as forerunner artifacts and learning what those are so then when the viewer comes in it can be like the day that they discover what the forerunners are or something something like that like like because that's what like like when we enter the story in season one with chief like that is us coming into him discovering the artifact and that's like you know we don't come in any earlier to the story where it's standard operating procedure we come in when things change Mm. so i think we come into onyx when things start to change and they start to learn what onyx really is that's how i would interpret or you know introduce that and then since it is later in the season you can give it some mystery that leaves you on a cliffhanger to then explore in season three cool yeah very exciting can't believe they're doing onyx in the season crazy people (laughs) so uh yeah exciting stuff well i think i think that's it is there is there anything else you want to touch on? Any last crazy theories or are there um, any characters? I think we hit them all. We hit them all that are alive and well. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think uh, Perez maybe just like her where where she goes from here. I'm not sure. She doesn't oh, seem yeah, to have. Perez. We didn't I mean, talk about her. Yeah, I, I'm not where these refugees go. Maybe that's a, maybe they end up at a lair. I'm think, not sure. But uh, what, what I think happens? She, there? I think she goes to Onyx, and I think she becomes a Spartan three. I would like that. I would like to see I her like, progress. Like, yeah, that would be good. So this is bringing back something that you said in the very beginning of the commentary episode that you kind of feel that she doesn't really have a purpose yet. I think this would then give her that purpose. She yeah. would. She becomes a Spartan three, and and then she can be like a Lucy type of a character, and they can build her up for something greater that then leads into the next season. But I feel like that's that's a way to make her character have more of a purpose as opposed to just kind of being effectively a, a featured guest star for every episode for this season. Well, I think the fact that they've taken her off reach has she's kind of then served her purpose, which was to be the foil for John for like, you're a human. This is your planet. Your family was literally murdered. Your planet's about to be murdered. So like how you feel about it and seeing how you interact with John and emotional as Spartan um it was interesting was good because you needed that but you've now sent her away john no longer gives a shit about her great she gets the, the coin like but he doesn't care and then he's just he's concerned with now the reach which she is now off and you imagine quote unquote safe so like they have to have something for her to do and i i like the idea that they do that maybe Ackerson sends out like a kind of a call for like hey do you want vengeance for reach do you want to like sign up today and become soldier of the future or whatever like i i think yeah. that'd be cool he goes to like recruit from like the reach refugees yeah because be think cool. about this like because she much like Ackerson now like she now has nothing like mm. her home is yeah. reach her family was there her life was there and we saw it getting destroyed and then she leaves and there, there's that shot of her kind of looking back away from the, the 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 space in front of her and she's kind of like looking back towards the camera almost as if she is like looking back at reach as she is flying away from it and leaving it behind a lot like how Ackerson did when we last saw him he was kind of looking past camera to the back of the ship as he was leaving reach and leaving everything behind so I think it 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 gives her motivation to now do something because it's like yeah she now has nothing what does she have to fight for now that she doesn't have a home or a family or anything like that and 
you know, baby Ackerson does his manipulation thing and he's like, like you just said, you know, you want payback and all that vengeance or whatever, join the Spartan threes. But it could be a little bit more, it could be deeper than that. And that's where she then finds her new purpose. Hmm. You know, maybe, maybe she sees the Spartan three program to, to acquire similar traits to what John has to make, maybe she wants to be more like John after spending some time with her. Maybe that's something that gets explored. You know, I don't know. Hmm. Or maybe her and Kai, you know, get friendly or whatever, and she sees something in Kai. Like, I think that, yeah, there's a lot of, if they bring her to Onyx or bring her wherever Kai and Akerson and the Spartan Threes are, I think that can, that has a lot of interesting play to, to kind yeah, of well, just if, have and, well, and, if, and, and play around with her character. Well, if they don't do that, then I don't want to see her again. Like I don't think I, yeah. I don't need to cut to her anymore from the show to be honest because like we have so much going on now that if we're cutting from Reach the fall of it to another planet with the other side characters some of them not the most popular in the show I don't think you need to th- right to cut to a she third would, she would effectively be a fourth thread if yeah. she's on her own yeah because you need, you yeah. have Akerson, Kai and and maybe Key uh, Miranda, Miranda yeah. over in Onyx you have the Reach crew and then you have Quan and Kessler, Kessler and Li- Liara. Uh, Liara. Yeah, yeah. So like th- those are like your three, your A, B, C plot. And I feel like either she's just gone and that's like, that could be the last we see of Perez. And I honestly would be okay with that. But if we do see more of her, she needs to attach herself to one of the other two yeah, plot yeah, threads agreed, since yeah, she's yeah. leaving Reach. So otherwise, what, she's just going to be with all these civilians and looking after them? Like that's not interesting. Yeah, and there's nobody else on this ship who could be in, like if she was there yeah. with keys, okay, maybe, and maybe he does some crazy cool stuff in ship in in orbit, but like that's that's not a plot line. You know that's I mean? where so. I kind of thought it was going to where she would be like a protege for him, mm. or like something like that, like a you know partner in crime, you know a, a number two. But that very quickly went away when he was like, "I'll be right back." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, no, you won't. No, you won't. Um. So yeah, it, like, but yeah, but if if that is the last we see of Perez, then then I do think you're right that she kind of did fulfill her purpose as being kind of a window character for Chief, which is a little disappointing that she didn't have more of an impact. But that being said, I I think it's fine. But if you keep her around, I feel like you got to go Spartan three. Okay. All right. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think yes. Yeah. Because. This is also the same, more or less, plotline that created Vale. So you have Perez, who understood Sangheili. She translated that message. Kind of like what Vale was doing. Vale was evacuated from her planet as it was being glassed and watched it glassed. Kind of like what Perez is kind of doing. And she was sent away with her parents and stuff. Mm. So, or did Vale lose her parents? I can't remember. So... And then obviously gets recruited, becomes a Spartan. So I wonder, does Perez, from the perspective of maybe understanding St. Healy, have a little bit more to offer the universe of this canon? But maybe, maybe we don't know. But I think there's, there's some similarities there that I'm liking. The fact that you're saying she could be potentially recruited, I like this. If if th- yeah. That would be the only way I'd want this here kept, I think. Uh, I, yeah, I, yeah, and that I would yeah. agree with that. I would, if, if they would better take me by surprise if they have a, some other plan with her but if it's yeah. just space hopping and hiding from the covenant that doesn't sound too interesting no no that's kind of what we got with quad where she just was hopping around magical trying to avoid mm. venture and we all know how that went down Ooh, secret best moment of the show they killed madrigal off screen i like that oh yeah good. right yeah. wasn't that great Killed well actually yes and no because like they did leave a tiny little thread to keep magical interesting with the monitor and the idea of a portal. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But like, you know, but then they they blow it off. All, yeah. So again, I what I think I want the most is a reason to like Quan. Like I I need answers. For, I need to know what she did during those six months. I need to know what the portal is. I need to know what the monitor is. I like that very brief scene in the last episode. Where she was like, I, my entire family of generation has sworn to protect Magical and I failed. And she has this huge weight. I'm like, yes, that's like the one bit of character we've gotten from Quan the entire series. I want more of that and we haven't been getting it and it's been frustrating me. Mm. So, 
I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> your dad likes Quan, so come on. No, no, your dad likes. Oh McKee. no, my dad, my dad McKee. likes McKee. McKee, sorry. McKee. Okay, okay. Yeah, my dad wants McKee to win. I need to see if he's seen this episode. He probably <laughs> has. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, enough with that. All right, awesome. An hour episode, David. Very sorry. good. I like this. Sorry. Well, it was a good episode, man. It was a media. Episode. It was. There was, was a lot, a lot to, to talk it. about. Yeah, and we had we had some predictions to put. You know, we gotta we gotta boop them in. So, you know, when we're right, we're like, oh, see, I told you. Yeah, man. I want to see Halsey gear up these Spartans. Come on, that's what I want. Yeah, no, I do too. I think it's a great idea. I think I think that makes a lot of sense. I'm behind it. All right, well, let's wrap it up there. Thank you, listeners, for joining us for another episode of Halo TV Plus. David, thank you again for joining me on the show. Thank you for having me. I would love to have you back maybe after the whole season is out. We do some retrospectives of, the, of season two. Yeah, let's do it. Halo the series premieres exclusively on Paramount Plus every Thursday. If you're interested, Alex Wakeford releases his silver debriefing blog post on Halo Waypoint that recaps the story of each episode in detail and serves as a hub for additional show-related content. He also provides some insight into core canon-related tie-ins from the episode in question. So check that out over on Halo Waypoint. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, you can find every episode to all of the shows that Evolved produces on our website, EvolvedHalo.com. Don't forget to check us out on social media. We have Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Once again, another special shout-out to all of our patrons for supporting Evolved and making all of our shows possible. Head over to patreon.com slash Halo Evolved to learn more. If you like this show, rate us and leave us a review. We greatly appreciate all the feedback we receive from our listeners to improve the quality of our shows. And you can leave us an email at podcastevolved at gmail.com or a voicemail on our Google phone number 205-EVOLVED, which is 205-386-5833. Let us know what you've been thinking about these first four episodes of season two and just season two as a whole pop some predictions down in there we should do some we should ask the discord as well we should get some community uh, input on uh, some of what we're thinking the show we don't think about time in this episode but until next time i've been your host oren evolve evolve <laughs>